I am near Narrabri in New South Wales, and that is a radio telescope, one of several all in a row. This is the Paul Wild Observatory, home to science equipment that's teaching us right now more and more about the universe, how it works, and how our sun works. First, I'll tell you a little bit about the guy this place is named after because he was pretty fascinating. Paul Wilde was born in Sheffield, England in 1923. He had several claims to fame. He was the chairman of the CSIRO from 1978 to 1985. Prior to that, he was pretty much the world's foremost authority on understanding how the sun works. In the 1960s, he petitioned to get funding to build something pretty awesome right where I'm standing. If you have a look at where I'm standing on Google Maps satellite view, you'll see that I'm currently in the center of a three kilometer circular path, which is really obvious on the satellite image. The three kilometer circle is the remnants of the Colgura Solar Radio Heliograph, a radio telescope array that was designed to image the sun. The giant ring used to have 96 13 meter wire dishes. This is one of the old wire dish antennas from the solar radio heliograph. It was built in 1967 and until 1980 it was the world's leading source of data about the sun, solar flares, solar wind and pretty much everything we've learnt so far about how the sun works and how it interacts with the rest of the solar system. Paul Wilde also invented some pretty cool stuff including a microwave landing system called Interscan for assisting commercial aircraft to land that's almost identical to the system that NASA used to land the space shuttle. He was also a passionate contributor to the ongoing cause of getting high speed trains operating in New South Wales which is a fight that's continuing to this day. Apparently he held a ticket for the first run of the XPT or the express passenger train and he was incredibly disappointed by how not express it actually was and that it barely approached its theorised maximum speeds. Dr Wilde started what became the very fast train project or VFT which remains to date the least unsuccessful attempt to introduce high speed rail into New South Wales even though it too failed for a number of reasons. There are six 22 metre dishes at the observatory. The first five are on a track that allow them to be relocated. So this guy is dish number three. All the way down there are dishes one and two down at the end of the track. And all the way down there are dishes four and five. The sixth dish is located about three kilometres further west in line with the track. The solar radio heliograph shut down in 1980. Nowadays this area is home to a bunch of science projects including the Australian Telescope Compact Array which is the six huge 22 metre dishes that form part of the Australian Telescope National Facility, a virtual telescope many hundreds of kilometres across capable of resolving very fine detail. These dishes work in conjunction with the 64 metre CSIRO Parks Radio Telescope. That one and another single 22 metre dish near Mopra in New South Wales. This is a model of the Mopra telescope which is near Coonabarabra to form a very long baseline interferometry array or a virtual radio telescope dish the size of half of New South Wales. And there's another radio telescope grouping being built in the northern part of Western Australia that will also form part of the array which will result in a virtual dish the size of Australia which will massively increase the resolution and capabilities of this equipment. Also at this site is the Sydney University Stellar Interferometer, which uses similar interferometry principles as the larger dish array, but on a smaller scale, and is used in various projects to learn more about how stars work. Generally, the equipment is used in conjunction with other interferometers to research things like why quasars behave the way they do and other mysteries about the universe. There is also a Birmingham Solar Oscillations Network node here, which is a resonant scattering spectrometer used in conjunction with five other nodes around the world to constantly monitor what's going on inside the sun. Dr. Paul Wilde died in 2008 at the age of 85. At his funeral, his casket was draped with flowers in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, representing the spectrum of light visible in sunlight. If you find yourself near Narrabri, you should absolutely make time to stop by at the Paul Wilde Observatory, check out the Visitors Information Centre displays, and sit and think for a while about how incredible it is that human beings figured out that by pointing these things at the sky and listening to the noise that comes back, it can tell us stuff about how the universe works. Because that's pretty freaking cool. There's a, a toy radio telescope here that demonstrates how radio telescopes work and you can actually steer it around and pick up heat emissions from things in the area like people or you can point it at the sun which is what I'm about to do. So the sun is more or less directly overhead so it's just that. There's the sun. And there we are, away from the sun again. And that actually works pretty well. 
apparently the sun sounds like a drowning gerbil, but that's okay. If you enjoyed this video, or you at least found it somewhat interesting, I'm going to suggest that maybe you hit the subscribe button. No pressure, it's right there if you want to press it. If you do, you won't miss out on future videos. You can also follow IDU Curiosity on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and you can always leave a comment below and let me know how I'm doing. Thank you for watching. And now I'm in the middle of an 11 hour drive and I'm going 10 kilometers round trip out of my way to go and get about 10 seconds of non-essential B-roll because a little bit of production value goes a long way.